So recently, I came across needing to do an animation like this. So kind of a coin drop, coin spin drop, bottle spin drop kind of thing. I thought, well, how could I automate this with just a little bit of manual input? Seemed fairly simple to do, right? So let's take a quick look at how we accomplish this. So first and foremost, the geometry, original geometry is being brought in from Solaris, from the Labs context. Let's have a look. This is what it looks like inside of Solaris. Very simple scene, all right? So yeah, this is what it looks like. So we're bringing in the vase and the table. Initially, I tried to do this inside of a sub modifier, but I was having some viewport issues. I'm not seeing these viewport issues now, but trust me, <laughs> Previous I was having some viewport issues, not sure what was going on there. But yeah, anyways, so we did it here. Um, so yeah, let's jump in. So the geometry is being brought in from love. So as you see, you have the table coming in and we have the vase coming in. All right, uh, the table is just being brought in for reference, obviously, so not important. So let's look at the vase. So it's coming in as packed USD geometry, right? All packed. And We'll be animating the packed geometry for sure. But here we unpacked it simply because we wanted to use the edges of the geometry to create a curve, right? Where we'll run a point along. So essentially, the way I got this to work was to create this curve, run a point along the curve, and have the normals, right, run in the direction of the curve. And as the curve, as the point moves along the curve, it it has the correct normal, and we use that normal as the axis of rotation, and we use the point that's running along the curve as basically the pivot of that rotation. So, so we unpack the geometry, use the convert line sop to turn edges into curves, and make sure that it's a closed curve. We'll see in a minute why that must be. And then I resample the curve. I always resample my curves just to get even distribution or ensure that there is even distribution of points along the curve. Then I use a uh, I use the orient along curve to get the correct normals to ensure that these normals are moving in the right direction along the curve so that we can accomplish what we want. So after so from here, I also blasted a single point from that curve which is the point that we will use, that we will run along the curve, right? So I just, so the curve is here, blast a single point into there, and that point will run along the curve. All right, and as you can see now, the normal for that point is pointing in the negative Y direction. I don't know, I just prefer it pointing in the positive Y, so I just use a wrangle to do that. And then to get it to run along the curve, this is what this is where the path the form comes in. You could also do this with a curve sop, but the thing with the curve sop is it doesn't allow me to go around the curve multiple times, right? Which I needed. So the path sop or the path the path the form sop allows me to run along the curve, around the curve as many times as I want, which brings me back to the point of why this must be a closed curve. Because if it isn't, let's make this an open curve and already you can see the points gone why because it's shooting off the curve so it goes around the curve once and then when it gets to the end it shoots off in the direction of the last normal and it just keeps going however if it's a closed curve it just continues going around and around and around the curve which is what we want in this case all right so then we have a name attribute, which is coming from the lapse context. I didn't want it. You could use it, but I didn't want to use it. So I deleted it. And we are using KineFX, by the way. We are going to use KineFX, or we are using KineFX. So I use the Rig Doctor um, SOP to initialize the joint. What is a joint in KineFX? What makes a joint? Well, a joint is simply a point with a P attribute. Every point has a P attribute. So what makes a joint special? Well, it also must have a name attribute and a transform attribute. The transform attribute is a three by three matrix which controls the rotation and scaling of that joint. So here in the rig doctor, we are initializing the point, the, the, the name attribute, which in this case is just point something, in this case point zero, you could call it anything you want. And 
here we're also initializing the transform attribute. So now this is officially a join, which you can see by the viewport um, gizmo display thing here. Then um, the rig pose, we send that joint into our rig pose. The rig pose is essentially how you uh, animate joints. In this case, honestly, I didn't need to send it into our rig pose, but I just did. So the magic happens here inside this attribute wrangle. All right. So inside this attribute wrangle, we send the joint. Now, remember this joint, or before it became a joint as a point, <laughs> it's moving along the curve uh, in the direction of the curve with the normals going in the direction of the curve which this normal is our axis of rotation, right? And the point as it goes along the curve, which, which as you can see, as our joint, it's moving along the curve. And the joint is basically the pivot of our rotation. So as it moves along the curve, it's like our pivot is, is our pivot of rotation. Our origin of rotation is moving along the curve. And because we are working, we're going to use the normal as the axis the axis is also moving along the curve, right? So inside the attribute wrangle, we're saying, because even though this becomes a joint or became a joint, it still has that normal attribute. It still has the N attribute on it, even though as a joint, um, we're having difficulties visualizing that here, but it's still there. Just check your geometry spreadsheet. You can see the normal is still there. So inside a attribute wrangle, we're saying, um, I don't know why I'm using the point here because I could just say rotation axis equals at n, right? Which is what it equals. So rotation axis equals at n, which is our normal. And we're creating a matrix, an identity matrix, which is just a matrix with ones in the diagonal. So it does nothing. But then here we're using the vex function to rotate that, uh, to rotate that matrix. And we're rotating it by a specific angle that we set up here. So I created an angle channel and we have the angle value here. And then there's the axis of rotation, which we're using again, the normal and the normalized version of that as the axis of rotation. And then here to ensure that this works again, like I said, the transform attribute of the joint is how rotations and scaling gets set. So here we want to set the transform, we want to set this attribute so that it picks up the rotation from this rotation matrix. So we use set point attribute. You could do this, I guess, inside of a rig wrangle, which probably takes care of some of this for you, but I'm using a point wrangle here. And um, so the so we're setting the transform attribute point number, which is just one joint. So just that could even be zero because just one joint. And the value that we're setting that to is the rotation matrix that we are rotating here by whatever angle a lot using this normal as the axis. So that works all great for us. So now when we come to the joint deform, like I said, we're animating the packed USD, the packed USD vase, right? And we're, we use a capture pack geosop to get the attributes necessary for the joint deform. And then inside the joint deform now, we have, um, we are using this that we worked on here inside of the rung. We are using that as the animated pose. And we are using the original initialized joint from the rig doctor as the capture pose. And that's coming into the joint deform. And now, see, we have the animation. So as the point moves along the curve, see, we get that sort of uh, effect. Okay. So to have it drop as it goes on and to have it reload to zero, um, on the attribute wrangle, I just have a multiplier for the angle value that's multiplying down to that's um i'm using the frame value of the frame to take this value down to zero as the animation goes on so as the animation goes on this value is running down to zero and when it gets to zero it's also clamped because you can see here inside the 
wrangler and I'm clamping it between zero and one. So once it gets down to zero, it's multiplying the angle value by zero, which means the angle is zero. So that's how we get it to drop. So yeah, that's it. That's how we accomplish this, uh, this effect. So uh, yeah, thank you for uh, tuning in. All right.